on and we can begin us begin with a word of prayer the lord god as we come before you this evening once again uh, we marvel at how your word is uh, threaded together or weaved so intricately and how we can profit from it uh, by studying it and learning and and uh, inwardly digesting it thank you for this opportunity to do just that and also to minister to one another here and and beyond this circle of friends uh, outward in our church and community. Uh, allow your Holy Spirit to open up the word of God today uh, as we pray in, in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right, let's jump right in. You see Jesus feeds the 4,000? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Great. I'm getting it so I can see all of you, which on a computer you can do. You just press the part of the video that where it has the nine little boxes, and then you can lengthen it and you can see everybody. But that's how I do it anyway. So. Okay. So let's just uh, read through this passage, very interesting passage. Of course, Jesus had fed the 5,000 back in chapter six. And now he's feeding the 4,000. The, all the gospels contain the feeding of the 5,000, but only uh, Mark and Matthew contain uh, this, this one of the 4,000. So we asked the question, why is Mark, why does Mark share a second feeding? Uh, and uh, there's several things that are going on here that we need to be aware of. Uh, first of all, do you remember from yesterday where they were? The deaf man had gotten healed. Uh, and they were in the region of Tyre and Sidon. Yes. They were outside of Israel. I'll, I want you to just take a look at verse 31 for a second. <clears throat> it says that then he returned. <clears throat> excuse me. Then he returned from the from region of Tyre and went through Sidon. Now, yesterday I had the map. Tyre is along the coast, Mediterranean Sea. And then, um, I don't know, 90 miles north of that is Sidon, north of that. Now, Galilee is southeast of Sidon and Tyre. So he went north to go south. And then he went east to the region of the Decapolis, which you remember was on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. But what is going on here? We see that there's a lot of Jesus' activity that is occurring away from the Israelites. And he's uh, showing forcefully that he is bringing the kingdom of God to the entire world. And uh, he also is giving time for the disciples to come to the conclusion by hearing his word daily, by being with him all the time, who he is. So that'll be, that'll be shown us in chapter eight, uh, where Peter says, you are the, the son of the Christ. You are the Christ. They have come to, he has come to that conclusion. So he's going north. And then he's going around the Sea of Galilee, and he's going east to the Decapolis. Now, remember, the Decapolis was this barren, lonely, desolate place uh, where the pigs were, where the demoniac was. And he's going back in that region. And we may ask ourselves, what does he expect to find over there? But you remember, he had cured the demoniac who wanted to follow him, but he said, no, go to your own people. And so you have a Gentile evangelist for a year now uh, evangelizing the whole countryside. And so when he gets over there, there are thousands of people waiting to see him. You never know what one word by one person will result in. And yet this is what, it, what has happened. His fame preceded himself. And so as he 
goes to the area of the Decapolis and he feeds the 4,000. Uh, he uh, stays three days with them where they have no food, not just one day where the people come, spend the whole day, retire, and he feeds them before they leave. Now the people are so excited about being with him, they're going to spend three days with him. So listen to the reading. In those days, when again, a great crowd had gathered and they had nothing to eat, called his disciples to him and to them uh, and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. Some, some people really hungry for the word and for miracles. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they'll faint on the way. Some of them have come from far away. And his disciples answered him, how can one feed these people with bread here in this desolate place? And he's asked them, how many loaves do you have? They said seven. And he directed the crowd to sit down on the ground and he took the seven loaves and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And they set them before the crowd. They had a few small fish and having blessed them, he said that these also should be set before them. And they ate and were satisfied. And they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. There were about 4,000 people. And he sent them away. And immediately he got into the boat with his disciples and went to the district of Dalmanutha. A couple of things I want to share before we open it up for discussion. This is, um, there are times in the Bible where Jesus speaks about his compassion for others. Uh, in the account of the feeding of the 5,000, he had compassion for their spiritual hunger. Here he has compassion for their physical hunger. And the compassion is a very interesting word. Let's pull it up. And you see, I don't know if you can see it in, in, I don't know how the resolution is on your, your device, but the word is slag shinizomai, which means to uh, empty your bowels or to, to, your bowels are just gurgitating because the bowels were considered the seat of emotion. <laughs> That's, you wouldn't think that, but if, but if you knew it in English, it's, my, my bowels are gurgling. That means I have compassion. <laughs> I think you have, I think you ate too many tacos myself, but you know, that's, that's the story there. So you just have, uh, feel sympathy. Um, you moved with compassion. You had a schlag, a schlag chisnism, my bowel movement, uh, this kind of thing. Was, I mean, you could go on and on with this, but he had a compassion. So that's how we translate it in English. And um, the disciples, you would have thought, would have kind of figured out by now that Jesus is going to feed them some bread and feed the crowd. I mean, he's done it once that they would have, like, not asked, not doubted, not asked, asked the question, how are you going to do this? And mm -hmm. they would have said, well, we know you can do it, Lord. Go for it. And yet they still had hardness of heart at this point. Uh, the other thing that I would like to mention to you is that um, that as they as as Jesus is asking the question, there's always a reason for every question he asks. And how can uh, he ask them? Verse five: How many loaves do you have? After they ask him, how can one feed? People. How can we show compassion when we have limited resources, is what the disciples are saying to Jesus. And Jesus is saying, take whatever meager resources you have and show compassion to those in need and see what God can do with that. Don't use it as a cop-out 
to say, well, you know, if I were rich like that guy, I could do something. Take what you have, let God bless it. And you never know where it'll end up. But this is a point to be made here. And Jesus wanted them to have faith in, uh, in the generosity of God, that when you put him first in that area, you'll be blessed. The other thing that you might want to note is that in chapter um, six, feeding of the 5,000, here we go. Um, it says at the end of that, and they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Uh, here it was uh, seven seven baskets, except the baskets were different. Yeah, I read that. The ba word for basket for the Jewish people, which is the feeding of, of the 5,000, he was going to feed the Jewish people, is the word kofanos. It is a container, small at the top, bigger at the bottom, uh, that a Jewish person will carry around for, with him for a meal or two. It was a little picnic basket kind of thing. And they would always carry, they would carry that around because they wouldn't sit around and, and go to Arby's for lunch. They'd carry their, their stuff around for their meal and it would be in the coffinos. Now in chapter eight, feeding of the 4,000, let's look at the word for basket. Your basket. Your um, word for basket is um, spirus. Spirus is a hamper. It's huge. It can fit a person inside. As a matter of fact, in Mark, uh, in Acts chapter 9, verse 25, I believe it is, uh, Jesus, uh, Paul, Paul was let down over a wall in a bath, one of those spiruses, these baskets. That's how big it was. So seven of those baskets are even greater than 12 of the little um, lunch boxes, right? So you yeah, need to be aware of that. And you might not know that if you just read this in English and don't have the, the Greek uh, background for it. So what is the point? The point is, uh, Matthew talks about this and uh, he says 4,000 men. So we're talking about 16, up to 16,000 people with the women and the children that were involved. Uh, and he blessed all of them. Where do these people come from? Probably from the demoniac who shared the word of God with the entire countryside for now, probably a year's worth of evangelizing. And then Jesus is coming back. Everybody wanted to see this. So those are some uh, pointers that I wanted to make in this story as um feeding of the 4,000, the, the things maybe you wouldn't have thought of. Okay, uh, comments, questions? I'm intrigued by the number seven. That happens uh, quite often throughout the gospels. And so what does that tell you, uh, Hale? It must be a magic number. <laughs> well i heard one i heard once fit. it's father son holy ghost covers you north south east and west number seven hail so if you add three and four you, you get, get seven and what if you multiply three times four you get 12 <laughs> which is the disciples isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Yep. A totality of God and his creation is what yes. that symbolizes. Complete. And when you look at the Gentile world being included in God's domain, they don't belong to lesser gods, to idols that they're worshiping. They belong to the God who can make and remake out of nothing enough for everybody. And uh, yeah, so there probably is a symbolic value in that. There certainly is in the book of Revelation in the, in the numbers that are used there. 
Thank you for Pastor, that. Word. Pastor, um, I just think it's a miracle of the people stayed three days with no food. Um, when I was in the hospital for my first lung transplant, I was NPO or nothing by mouth for three days. And uh, let me tell you, when they told me I wasn't going to get that lung, I said, bring me the food. <laughs> I was hungry. So that to me is amazing to eat. I mean, I fasted before too, but three days is a long time. And um, I'm sure they had some water, but Jesus was testing his disciples and he doesn't have a lot of time left. I mean, he's pretty soon we're going to get in the transfiguration and he's going to be going, dying on the cross and going up to heaven. And he's asking them, you know, a question he's testing them and they still don't get it. <laughs> You know, and that's us sometimes too. Um, but yeah. I'd like you to, thank you. I'd like you to see another tie in. Look at uh, verse four. The question the disciples uh, uh, say is how can one feed these people with bread here in this desolate place? What desolate place was someone trying to feed Jesus bread? The wilderness. Out in the wilderness with the devil. <laughs> so the desolate place, the place of the where the demoniac is, where all the demons exist, the wilderness. This is the place Jesus is coming to conquer, as well as the hardened Israelites. He's going to conquer all of it for him. He's going to make of all nations his disciples. And it's going to start, we get to see a little bit of it now before the crucifixion, and then much more so afterwards in the other books. But the word desolate place, it, you see that in several places, and it's always uh, of the place where uh, you're going head on against uh, the enemy. You know, I was wondering, both with the 5,000 and the 4,000, they collected all of this, these crumbs and leftover. What do you think they did with that leftover food? So now they had to go home. They have food so they could go home and uh, eat along the way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Some of them are three days away from home, and uh, they had nothing. So not only did he feed them there, he fed them on their way home. He provided yes. for them on their way home. Isn't that something? Yeah, and they were satisfied, verse eight. They ate and were satisfied. <laughs> that means I, they had a full stomach. Yeah. I read uh, something where they suggested that these loaves of bread were actually crackers. In that area, they didn't have necessarily, you think big loaves of bread, but they were more the size of crackers. Oh, I don't know. It was interesting. Yeah, I don't know if we'll find out know. anything on uh, optos. Uh, uh, here it says loaf. Oh, uh, okay. Food composed of flour mixed water and baked in the form of an oblong or round cake uh, as thick as one's thumb and as large as a plate or platter. Hence, it was not to be cut or broken. Cut but broken. The same thing for communion. He broke it and gave it to them. And in that case, okay. it was unleavened. Uh, and um, all right, we could do more research on that. I didn't do that. Well, that's all right. It was just interesting. Very good. Okay. And then this uh, district of Dalmanatha, we don't uh, necessarily know where that is. When the uh, Sea of Galilee was a uh, real low a lot of uh you can see some of the the ruins they saw a, a place they couldn't identify they think this may have been yet on the west side of uh, the sea of galilee and right away he gets over there and the pharisees are right there ready to get ready to get him we'll talk, talk a little bit more about that tomorrow night well, what we're going to do tonight, any more questions or comments? Otherwise, we're going to conclude with prayer and then we'll uh, open it up to some of the other things we're going to do tonight. I have okay, uh, uh, Jeannie, go ahead. I have a thought about or a question, maybe 
about the crowd that has been with him for three days and had nothing to eat. I wonder if when they came, if they had a little food with them and ate ate it up during those three days and at the end of three days they had nothing left. I can't imagine if there were women and a couple thousand children that these little kids went three days with no food. Yeah, and that could well have been that they, they had their daily provision, but they not, may have not have known the first day that they're gonna be there three days, but they may have had something for a little bit of time on. It would make some sense. So here you have uh, the setting of the stage of Jesus um, being a Messiah for the entire world. We see so much good stuff going on uh, among those who were not even Jewish and what he did there. And of course, uh, it would all these miracles, palm miracles, would never satisfy the Pharisees, no matter how many uh, were done. And uh, they're going to be asking for an astronomic sign. And we'll talk about astronomic miracles versus regular rather than gastrointestinal miracles uh, <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, let's close with a moment of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for being the God who has given us uh, our every need. You provide the food that's on our table. Uh, you provide the instruments to make it. You provide the funds to buy it. You provide the mouth that eats it. You give us everything that is ours, including our own life. Thank you for that. And thank you most of all for life eternal. We learn this from, from your uh, sacred word and bless us in that learning in Jesus name. Amen. Amen.